Let's get straight to the lead story tonight, and that is the three-week suspension to Jeremy Finlayson. First off, thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are that he got it wrong. Uh, he realised that straight away. Um, you know, the, the AFL's taken this very, very seriously, uh, as they should. But I'm still uh, disappointed in that, you know, the inconsistencies within the penalties over the last month. Uh, if Jeremy Finlayson was a bigger name, uh, would he have got the three weeks? Has he been an easy person to do this to in regards to the three weeks compared to what happened with Alistair Clark? So that's we're, where I... We're going to talk about, about personality yeah. umpiring yeah. a little bit later on and all this sort of mm. stuff. Um, and we're going to go through a few things. Yeah. I won't jump ahead of where yeah. we're going, other than to say we need a little bit more strict guidelines yeah. on everything, from the drug rules through to this type of thing. So, he gets three weeks. Mm. The male, uh, Damien Barrett, is that he would have, was going to get five, four to five, they're arguing. They cut it back because of his remorse that he instantaneously reported to his uh, football director on the night, Chris Davies, uh, and all these other things. They also took into effect that he personally has had his house rocked, literally, rocks thrown at his house, that his wife, who is suffering from cancer, has uh, received vile um, uh, social media, and so has he been attacked. It's been a complete horrible situation of his own making mm. in the first yeah, Of his own making, yeah. But at the same time, it's taken six days to get to yeah. this. It's been a long, tortuous way to get to something that could have been done the very next morning. Well, Friday night incident, uh, admission of error and guilt and remorse in the immediate aftermath, even before he left the ground. There was a, a closed case that could have been dealt with as early as the weekend. And if not the weekend, the Monday. We get to Wednesday night, we've got it. Um, they've arrived at the right outcome today. I, yep. I'm absolutely convinced of that. But it does shed light and a lot of questions on what happened seven weeks ago when Alistair Clarkson was, was walked past with what he did in a similar homophobic space. So let's roll through. This is Chris Davies from Port Adelaide today. There is no excuse for what Jeremy said. I think in fairness too, Jeremy, um, you know, from the minute that the word left his mouth, he's tried to do whatever he could to, um, to highlight that he wanted to accept responsibility for that. Fair to say we think that both players and officials should be treated um, you know, the same in, in this regard. Well, the AFLPA came out and responded through their CEO in Paul Marsh. And I think the key takeaway in this statement is the paragraph, we believe the AFL is consistently inconsistent and there are double standards in its approach to dealing with players compared to others on behavioural matters. Also, if this type of conduct is a three-week sanction for a player, it should be for everyone involved in the game. And it should be clear everyone in the industry up front rather than open-ended approach that is currently in place. Which highlights uh, one thing for me, uh, gentlemen, is that you don't compound a bad decision decision in the first place, which you started with there, Damo, because you missed sanctioning um, mm. Alistair Clarkson, that doesn't become the benchmark. You get the opportunity to fix a previous mistake. Unfortunately, Jeremy Finlayson's the first one to get suspension. And the next one, Jimmy, I've got no doubt will be five and but six. Do we need and so that should be. I can confirm yeah. from the AFL, sort my sources in there, that it'll have a six plus next time up. And well, the, quote, the yeah. quote that uh, this Lord is, uh, three will be cut, was going to be four or five, and it'll go up exponentially, quote, until it stops. Yeah. Mm. So it's just going to go, they've, they've decided now that's it. Everyone should get the Finally. message on three and, and all the incidents around Finlayson. It would have been easier, as, as we yeah. I think all agree, that, that had there been a statement made and a decision of a hard nature on Alistair Clarkson, this could have been dealt with really quickly and decisively and, and hopefully it would have been an end game for this type of behaviour. So they're saying, they being the inside the AFL, that Clarkson was provoked, it was a to and fro, no one complained about it, blah, blah, blah. What we're finding out is when the Essendon players were, investiga were interviewed by the uh, AFL investigation officer, mm. they were upset. Quote, Essendon players were upset. So they came out, the Bombers, and said, we didn't like this at all. No, you're not going to get the old code out of this. We thought it was way out of line. And that strengthened the arm of yeah. the AFL that this is where people are on this issue. There's an element of playing semantics with words. I mean, we as a yeah. program and individuals, I think all of us, have chosen not to publicly repeat the words that Clarkson issue. They're a single word, Clarkson, yeah. and also what Finlayson offered. They're different words, but to me, playing semantics around what they mean and how they're used and, and how homophobic they are, I think it's murky. Yeah. Any use of any homophobic word is that, yeah. and as such, it should it, be treated the same way. 